<laughs> yeah, you're so cute. Hello and welcome back. This is episode 5 of my vlog series about creating the art for a 2D video game. And again, I have my daughter here with me. Um, because like I said, this is real life. Um, I got my makeup on and did my hair and got all glammed up because I was going to sit in front of the camera. And as soon as I sat down in this chair, I heard her crying. So she woke up and I am not wasting all this effort. So I'm just going to film with her today. So if you've been wa- oh dear, do not eat that. Do not eat that. That costs more than- oh my goodness, spit that out. Oh, my child nearly swallowed. I don't know if you can see this, but the tip of my Cintiq pen. So, as I was saying, if you have watched any of my- <laughs> if you have watched any of the videos this past week, um, you will know that this is the fifth and final day of this special launch that we are doing to show off everything that has been made and implemented in the game thus far. There are things that I could show you as well, but as of right now, I've shown you most of the core things that are up and running, and the rest will be, uh, you know, revealed later. Um, but today, we, I saved something kind of special for last. Um, I wanted to show you the peasants that we've made. So if you've watched any of the other videos this week, you'll know that um, peasants are a huge core component of our game, and we needed a lot of them, and I am one person. I am the sole artist in this, uh, in this endeavor. <laughs> and so we had to come up with kind of a creative solution to get a lot of peasants for not a ton of effort. So here in a second, I'm going to show you some footage of me drawing, and then of course I'll show you some gameplay so you can actually see the peasants, even though they don't do much yet, but they will. Um, you'll be able to actually see them. And then from here on out, I'll be posting weekly. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking maybe Fridays. Friday seems like a good day. Um, for no particular reason. Anyway, I'm thinking maybe Fridays. I will start, uh, posting just weekly updates so that you can see the progress that we've made in that week. Um, so without further ado, hang tight and I will go ahead and pull up my screen. Okay, here we go. I did not remember to get footage of most of the drawing process of these sprite sheets, but you still get to see the important bits. So, like I mentioned before, we needed a lot of peasants. Uh, if you've watched the videos earlier this week, you'll know that you can build hovels. So, as soon as you have places for the peasants to live, they can start moving in. And the computer needed to be able to randomly generate which ones you get. And so potentially we needed like hundreds of different variations. And if I had to draw all of those from scratch, um, this game would not get made. So we needed another solution to make sure that we could get lots and lots of different variations with minimal effort. And this here is basically what we came up with. So I've got two sprite sheets here. Um, one is our male sprites and one is uh, our female sprites. And basically, they are peasants broken up into pieces. So as you can see, I think that each one has um, eight different hairstyles. So eight hairstyles for the men, eight for the women. There are four different heads for each, three different bodies. Um, they all share the same arms and legs. And then there are six, I think, different faces. I think it's six. Six different faces. And each of those can come in different colors. So. Uh, one of the great things about Unity is if you have a white object, it can actually color something in-game. Uh, so things like the heads and the hairstyles and the arms can be colored in-game, so that way we could have variations on skin color and hair color. So the skin comes in a few different colors, like a light, medium, dark, and maybe I think maybe some variations on each of those. Hair comes in quite a few colors. Uh, we've got like red hair, brown, black, uh, blonde. Uh, there might be gray. I can't remember if there's gray or white. But the hair can come in many different colors. And also, uh, each of the faces has three different eye colors. And so I have not done the math myself, but, uh, and nor am I qualified to do the math myself, but I, I figure between all of those variations, we actually have probably hundreds of different possible peasants that could come and move into your kingdom. Okay, here we are back in our familiar kingdom. And if you watched yesterday's video, you will recognize this structure here, this hovel that I built with my own two hands. Um, my blood, sweat, and tears went into this hovel. But of course, inside is empty, if you will recall. We have these lovely beds and no bodies to fill them. And, of course, we need peasants in this game to get things done around here. And if we want peasants to move in, um, we need to first go to sleep. 
Um, this this works much like Santa Claus. We, we just don't question it. Peasants just can't move in until your back is turned, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to sleep now. Back to my cozy bed in my empty castle. I really, I actually just made a whole bunch of furnishings for this castle. Uh, so uh, that should be coming eventually. It's not one of the most important features in our game, but they are done, so your castle will be slightly less empty. Okay, here we are. It is a new beautiful day, 6.10 a.m., and we're gonna go and check and see if anyone moved into our hovel last night. Oh, would you look at that? We have three new peasants. Looks like we have a couple of gentlemen, nice sturdy fellows, and a lady right here. And you will notice that even though all of these peasants look different and unique, they're all using those pieces that you just saw me make during that um, montage video. So we've got, uh, looks like we've got all Caucasians this time, a couple of blondes. And so these peasants are going to be uh, basically helping me work my kingdom. And you may be asking yourself, well, what can they do right now? And uh, the answer is I'm probably going to make you wait till next week to see it. But <laughs> they can start. We do have, um, we've been working really hard on the blacksmithing system. And that's pretty much up and running. And I think I'll be showing that to you next week. And you'll get to actually see the peasants doing some work. But I did want to show you something just kind of funny. So I'm going to pull up my menu. Um, so, uh, besides having just, like, uh, peasants be randomly generated, their names are also randomly generated too, but it needs a bit of work. Um, okay, here we have our, uh, messages to let us know that new peasants moved in. But here are our peasants, and, um, the random name generator. <laughs> These are not the worst I've seen. Avis, actually, that's pronounceable. That's not bad. Uth? Eaton? Actually, all of those are pronounceable. Not, not too shabby. Usually the the names are pretty bad. Um, we've seen some super funny ones. So that, yeah, we're working some kinks out of that, but we thought it would be funny if they at least had names. Um, but here in this menu, this is where you can actually assign your peasants to do things for you. And like I said, next week I think I'm going to be showing you the blacksmithing system. So stay tuned for that. I have been making, I made a forge and some ore and some different uh, gold bars, iron bars, things like that, so you can actually start uh, building things here on your plot of land. So if you've liked what you've seen today, stay tuned because I will be showing more of it next week.